In the searing new documentary, Totally Under Control, Oscar-winning director Alex Gibney takes us deep inside this administration's failed pandemic response that's resulted in over 214,000 American deaths and cases still on the rise in 31 states. One of the experts he's enlisted to help him is the whistleblowing scientist who finally had enough and resigned from the National Institute of Health just last week. Please welcome Alex Gibney and Dr. Rick Bright. Good morning, and thank you for, first of all, thank you for making the documentary. Thank you for bringing it to us. Uh, you, Alex, you've been working on this documentary for what, the last, what, seven months in secrecy? And the day after you finally put it to, to rest, you know who tested positive for the coronavirus? What, <laughs> did you consider going back and changing the film at all? Well, uh, actually, we've only been work on it for five months. We, we were rushing we were mad, five three directors, four editors. And yeah, we finally got it done last Thursday and um, or no, a week ago last Thursday, we thought we were finally finished. And then at two o'clock in the morning, I got the call that President Trump had declared positive for coronavirus. So that seemed a kind of Ooh. fitting dark poetry for the end of the film. But because uh, we focus really right. on the early days when things could have been different. And uh, this was right. an avoidable tragedy. All these people didn't have to die. This number of people didn't have to be infected. Yeah. It's really an avoidable tragedy. And that's what that's what we focused on. Joy? Okay, so Dr. Bright. Yeah, Dr. Bright, over the weekend, Trump held his first public event since testing positive for coronavirus just five days after leaving the hospital. Um, he now claims that he is immune to the virus. So as one of the country's top immunologists, what's your reaction? Is, is he immune? Is that true? Joy, thanks for having me here today. Um, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Um, the information that we heard from the president today and from his son, Eric, last night about immunity is just absolutely not true. Um, there is nothing that um, we know today that would imply that they were immune from the, this virus and getting infected from this virus again. We don't even have the full story about his full infection or his level of contagiousness or if he's even cleared the virus today. It's this type of misleading, inaccurate information that continues to come forth from the president, his family, and the White House that is leading to the longevity of this pandemic itself. This type of misinformation is causing more harm than it is good. So, so is this a lie also? Because his son Eric says that his dad, Donald, uh, should get credit for pushing the vaccine since day one. Do you agree with that? Or is that another I lie? I disagree with that completely. I, I, I was there on the, in the, on the inside on day one. I know that there was resistance uh, and delays from the White House and from our political officials to fund and encourage the development of vaccines early on. It actually wasn't until about April 8th or April 10th before the, um, the secretary of HHS said, maybe we should start urgently making a vaccine. Remember, I went into the White House and met with Peter Navarro on February 8th. And in that meeting, mm -hmm. I said, we need to have a Manhattan Project for vaccines. We need billions of dollars to get started urgently on vaccines. We didn't get that support. The White House wasn't behind it. It wasn't until April. Sonny? Right. Well, Dr. Bright, Dr. Bright, you were the director of BARDA, the key office in developing drugs and vaccines to treat the coronavirus. In fact, you were the one to fast track the Regeneron antibody cocktail eventually used to treat President Trump himself. But in April, you were removed from your post and demoted. And you say you believe it was in retaliation for refusing to make hydroxychloroquine a drug Trump touted as a cure-all more widely available. And you filed a whistleblower uh, complaint. How hard was it to do your job as a scientist in this administration? It is unbearably difficult to speak the truth in this administration. Remember, from the start of this pandemic, we have not heard the truth from the White House, from the president, about this pandemic and its risk and how deadly it can be. Whenever anyone in the administration speaks up to tell the truth, to expose the lies and the misinformation, 
that is coming forth from the president and the White House. They are ridiculed. They are pushed aside. They are ostracized and, 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 and called many names. But this is not just about me. This is about thousands and tens of thousands of scientists, great world leading class scientists in our government who are working daily to find the truth, to tell the truth. And their truth has been overwritten by the White House. Their information has been ignored. Public health guidelines have been disparaged and ignored. This is why we have 215,000 dead Americans today. This is why we have up to 50,000 new infections today. This is why we're going to have terrible winter if we don't do something now to turn around the rhetoric, tell people the truth, and people need to follow those public health guidelines. Uh, well, uh, President Trump dismissed you as an angry, disgruntled employee who didn't do a very good job. Um, that, that, those are his words. What is your response to that? Those are the same words we hear from President Trump about every single person across the government who has spoken up to tell the truth. These are upstanding, hardworking civil servants who have dedicated their lives, as I have, to serving our country, protecting Americans. Whenever one of them speaks up, when I spoke up, he calls us a disgruntled employee. He says we're disloyal. He even tweeted that I was a creep. It's childish behavior from a leader of the United States when he should be focused on telling America the truth about the risk of this virus. And he should be leading by example, wearing a mask, encouraging social distancing, not having indoor rallies so people can be protected and not get infected from this deadly virus.